following Facebook friends. Good morning, Facebook followers. Good morning, overcomers at home and abroad. This is a day the Lord has made. I choose to rejoice and be glad in it. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continuously be in my mouth. This is God, servant Simeon Dumba. I come to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ this morning. Our soul coming king, our resurrected king. I come to you this morning taking authority over the airwaves and I plead the blood of Jesus over what I'm about to say this morning. God bless you. Please invite your family, invite your friends, invite your loved ones. Something crucial to discuss this morning. Something crucial. Our exhortation this morning is a very peculiar subject this morning. Thank God for Jesus. We finished our series yesterday on supernatural deliverance by uh, wise women in scripture and please look for that series is on facebook is on youtube you can go to our page and go to our website and you will find all the informations there god bless you so this morning i will be praying and also exalting on a subject that i believe is very dear to my heart few days ago our nation celebrated national unity national unity unification and uh, we were expected to pray for the nation and so on and so forth where we don't have to wait for a specific day in order to pray we pray always we pray every day for the nation for the leaders for the peace the progress and the prosperity of our people but this morning i want us to look at a key issue that needs healing like you know on the weekends we come we, we always minister on the subject, heal our land. So if there's one thing that must be healed, is our mentality. As Liberians, as Africans, as people of color, we need to heal our mentality. And I will start this morning on this subject, and tonight, by the grace of God, we will expand it further, and tomorrow night we will continue the same. I believe as Liberians, as Christians, as people of this part of the world, we need to understand that if we don't heal our mentality, if God does not heal our mentality, in another hundred years, we will be worse than what we are now. In another ten years, we will be worse than where we are now. Now, Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse number 6, that great administrator, that great servant of God, that great leader, with all his leadership skills, with all his expertise, with all his desire, with all the vision he had, he said something that I believe is one of the most profound statements ever made in scriptures as regards people and rebuilding of nations. In Nehemiah chapter 4 and verse 6, Nehemiah said, So build we the walls and finish it. And join the other half of the wall together, for the people had the mind to work. For the people had the mind to work. If we don't have the mindset of hard work and diligence, there is no way we can succeed as a nation. There is no way we can succeed as a family. All the problems in our families today it may be traceable to two things. Lack of money and lack of discipline. Lack of discipline which leads to lack of money. Lack of discipline which leads to lack of money. If you see all the problems in government today is traceable to two things. Lack of discipline. People are not disciplined in their mind. People are loose in their mind. So therefore they become loose talkers. They become loose in their behaviors and loose in everything they do. So we ought to reorientate ourselves. We need to work on our mindset. Take for instance, the Bible says in Proverbs 22 and verse 7, that the borrower will, the rich will rule over the poor, and the borrower will be servant to the lender. So if our nation has the mindset of always borrowing money, going for donor money and donor money and donor money, there is no way that donor nations or donor individuals will not rule over us. The borrower will always be servant to the lender, and the scripture makes it clear. If, if people don't have the mind to work. Now, in 2 Thessalonians chapter 3, and verse 10, the Bible says, He that does not work must not eat. So if we have laziness, 
indoctrinated into our children from the onset and they grow up to become dependent on us for everything. I can assure you the nation itself, the families will become dependent on government, the government will become dependent on other governments and that's how life continues. But this day, I want to break that curse. I want to join a lot of believers around the nation. I want to join the faithful followers that are watching this morning to say no to laziness in our mentality. Laziness in our mentality. Can anything good come out of Liberia? Yes. Good things can come out of Liberia, provided Liberians change their mindset. Change their mindset. Christian first, many years ago, God called me as a young child in this nation. And he told me he would take me out and prepare me to bring me back. But on my way coming back to this nation, 15 years ago, God told me, he said, you will get back to Liberia. You will not do church as usual. You will do church unusual. You will do church unusual. You are going to break the status quo. You are going to stop people from thinking the way they think you are going to change their mindset by the way you do ministry ministry will not be business as usual and christian friends the, re the results everywhere today are proofs of a renewed mentality now i may be a liberian from a specific tribe or from a group of tribes i may be a liberian from a specific part of this country and uh, my people know me and i know my people and i speak the dialect and so on and so forth i grew up in this country but if there is one thing that i know i don't do as liberian i don't think like a typical liberian i think beyond I think beyond. Even as Christians, the reason the people said in time about the church of Jesus Christ used to be poor, they said people poor like church rats, is because the mentality. People who brought the gospel to us those days, they brought us the adulterated form of the gospel. They brought us the, the gospel that was dependent on the missionaries for everything. We waited for the missionaries to give us clothes. We waited for missionaries to give us food. We waited for missionaries to give us wives to, 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 to get married. They waited for the missionaries to give us everything the missionary brought us bible they taught us to read they taught us to write they brought us sneakers to wear they gave us the everything we depended on them for everything so we need to go back to the drawing board why are we the oldest african nation and we are so underdeveloped is because we we never develop our minds we never program ourselves to become owners of this nation also, there are people who have the mindset that this nation is their farm, is their backyard. They only come here to harvest things and take it to other nations. What nation is said that all of the best of the best will always make reference to another nation? What other nation on the planet Earth you know of that people will go to school in other nations as soon as they, they, they are about to run up their, 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 their programs in those nations, they are looking for who to get married to and who to give their citizenship of those other nations they don't want to return home. It's a curse for a people not to love their own nation. Liberians, we do not love our nation. And the church of Jesus Christ may be struggling in the nation because the people don't have the mind to work. The people have the mind to lazy about. We need to wake up. COVID-19 came for many reasons, but I believe there is a positive side to every negative story. There is a positive side to every negative story because COVID-19 has taught us some lessons that if the church door could be closed, in our own generation, it means there's a time coming when other supply lines will close. As a minister of the gospel, do you have a backyard garden? Do you have something to, to, to fall on as a means of livelihood? Do you have a profession? Do you have a career apart from preaching and teaching? Our apostles, even going back to our covenant father, they were men who tilled the soil. Abraham was a, was, was a farmer. Abraham was, was, was a cattle rarer. He did something, and the blessings of God will always come upon the work of our hands. It will come upon the work of our hands. So we need to go back to the drawing board. We need to go back. I mean, quite recently, I have adopted quite a number of children. I have some of my boys who we were around the compound doing one or two things, trying to plant flowers and uh, cleaning the compound. And one of the, and a couple of them, one or two of them made mention. He said, well, Daddy, how did you learn agriculture? You mean you learned everything while going to school? I said, no. I didn't learn everything in the classroom, but in those days growing up, the kind of school we went to in this country, we had agriculture farm. I, I grew up in the interior part of this nation. I went to schools where we had to go to farm and do and do and go to go to work 
on the teacher's farm sometimes. We had to, the school had our own farm. The principal had his own farm. The teachers had their own farm. So during our spare time, we had to go to plant palm. I learned how to plant palm. I learned to plant cassava. I planted rice and planted all these things. So if we can go back to the drawing board, if our legislature cannot pass a law that will enable our educational institutions to, in, to empower our young people, we just give people part of knowledge, head knowledge, and we don't give them practical. I have a good number of young men that are sponsored through university in this country. Some are out of university. And in, coincidentally, some even went to do agriculture at the University of Liberia. And why doing agriculture? If I ask them, can you plant bitter ball and plant pepper? No, they don't plant pepper. They don't plant bitter ball, but we import bitter ball from Guinea. We import, we import bitter ball from, from, from neighboring countries and so on and so forth. If I'm doing the Ebola epidemic, one of the reasons our government, our government said they could not close our borders on time was because we needed to bring in food stuff from neighboring countries. Can you imagine that? A nation that is blessed with over 43,000 square miles and 98% of our soil is fertile. It's fertile. Anything you plant anywhere in this country will grow. You plant everything we eat, we grow in this country. Rice grows here. Corn grows here. Pepper grows here. Cassava grows here. Oranges grow here. But we import all of these things. And we go to work and import the things that we don't grow in this country. And we make them part of our diet. And if we don't eat these things, we have problem. I believe there's a time coming when the government should stop subsidizing rice. We should stop importing rice and let Liberians grow their own food. You see, oh, Reverend, you have touched a sensitive issue. Yes. If our leaders don't wake up now, we don't have a future as a nation because the borrower will always be servant to the lender. If we keep borrowing from China and borrowing from Janju and borrowing from Chun Chun and borrowing from Hin Hin, we will have to sing their songs and we will have to eat their food. If we eat their food, we will sing their song. If we are using their money, they will tell us how to use it and tell us when to be sick and tell us when not to be sick. We need to wake up. We need to wake up. War bear will never make a nation rich. We have people who rule this country in time past who never had the mentality. They never had the mentality to empower our young people. But they just use us as tools and made us to fight each other and made us to kill up each other and they left us with big holes everywhere we now need to wake up our nation is blessed our natural resources have not even been to been touched yet though bombing hills have become bombing hole though capital hill has become capital hell but the truth of the matter is that the mentality of liberians must change Nehemiah was a great leader in Nehemiah chapter 4 verse 6. Nehemiah was a blessed leader, but Nehemiah could not accomplish anything without the people's contribution. The people needed a change of mentality. They needed to have the willingness to work, willingness to work. Now the Bible says in Proverbs chapter 10 and verse 4, that he become a poor that dealer with a slack hand, but the hand of the diligent shall make rich. So our riches may not come from being members of political parties, no. Our riches may not come from even being in church every day of the week, no. Our riches will come from where we, we are prepared to put our minds to work and put our hands to work. Put our mind to work and put our hands to work. We need to get back to the work culture, not the laziness culture. The laziness culture came somewhere along the line. But some of us grew up in this nation, we had parents that were very diligent. As a very young child, 10 years old child, 9 years old child, I follow my father to the farm and follow him to the creek and follow him to the bush where he did his work, where he earned his living. I follow him as a child. Growing up in this nation, we are taught to work. At home, my mother taught me to cook and taught me to clean up. As early as a young child of 10, 11 years old, I knew how to cook for the entire house. But our children nowadays depend on everything. They want to go to the internet to find how they can cook. They will ask the internet, uh, internet, how do you cook? How do you cook this one? How do you make a, a, a thriller? How do you make this one? No, our, our own, we learn in those days by being around our parents, learning from the elders. I learned how to make rice farm by going to my grandmother's farm. 
I went on and I still know the place. I can go back to the village today. I still know the place. I went to the farm, not because I was compelled to do it, because I love doing it. I carried the rice on my head. And we went to, to we, we harvested the sea rice. We took it from the kitchen tap. We, 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 we processed the rice. We brought it to town and we pounded the rice and so on and so forth. Rice as sweet as it is has a process. It has a very difficult process. So if we are eaters of rice, we must be planters of rice. We must be producers of rice. If we are eaters of cassava, we must produce cassava. The part of the country where I grew up, we have cassava farm that used to be there for two, three years. They will tell you that's last, a year before last cassava. That's last year cassava. That's last year planting. That's year before last planting. But where are we, what are we, where are we going as a nation? We don't produce anything any longer. We import everything and we sit down and blame government for everything. No, we stop blaming government and blame ourselves. The people have the mind to work. Nehemiah came as a servant of God, as a great administrator, as a leader, but the people were willing. My Bible says if we are willing to work and we are obedient to serve, we will eat the good of the land. So this day, if there's a prayer that we ought to pray for our nation, we need to pray for the change of mentality. We need to change, our healing must begin in our mentality. We must change our mindset. Our mindset, take for instance, banking institutions in this nation, you can't blame them, will not give Liberians money, loan, to do business because they say Liberians are lazy. But they prefer giving them money to Asians, they give it to Arabs, and give it to people from other nations because they found out that the Liberians are unserious. So we don't, we use the Liberian resources and we give it to foreigners. We, we open companies and give it to foreigners to run because we are unable to run our own affairs. Christian friends, it's a problem. It's a problem. Today is Saturday morning. You are watching me now. You are about to take breakfast. Glory be to God. But how many of us will take breakfast of, with food that are produced right in this country? If you check our breakfast now, may they come from, 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 from India or from China. One way or another, our breakfast may come from Lebanon. You either eating Lebanese bread this morning, you eating uh, Indian mayonnaise this morning, and you eating, uh, uh, how do you call it, uh, 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 sausages made in another country. You don't even know American sausages. So on your table this morning, you have American sausages, you have Lebanese bread, and you have uh, uh, Indian mayonnaise. But as a typical Liberian, you grow plenty in this country. You also grow cassava in this country. To eat cassava and plenty, or even edos and plenty, you say, no, I don't get time for country food. The palm oil that is made right here. Do you know that 60% of the palm fruits that we grow in this country remain on the trees because our people are lazy to clean and cut it? Our people are lazy. They want to shout at the palm for it to fall to the ground. We need to change that mentality. We need to change that mentality. Um, take for instance, I live in the, in the Johnsonville area. Johnsonville is rich with palm, with palm trees. I, 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 in the Gardnersville area. Gardnersville is rich with palm trees and coconut trees. But we only allow the shade of these things. We stay only the shade of the coconut tree and we don't, we don't produce anything from the coconut tree. We stay only the shade of the palm trees and we don't, we don't even harvest the palm. We say, oh, the thorns are too much. We're looking for someone to help us cut the palm from the palm tree. Christian friend, it is, a, it is a problem in our nation. If we must go forward as a people, we need a change of mentality. We need a change of mentality. I said COVID-19 came to teach us some lessons. And what are the lessons? Every school in this nation must have a farm. Every church must have a farm. Every parent must have some backyard garden. If you have a parcel of land and you don't have land in the center, go back to the interior. Go back to the interior and let's, let's start tending the soil. Our soil is still blessed. Everyone in Monrovia come from somewhere. Everyone in the city come from somewhere. Our parents are out there in the interior. In fact, now the interior people now are waiting for how to bring things from the city. They want to come to Monrovia and buy pepper. And they want to come and buy chicken feed. And they want to come and buy uh, a pig tail. And they want to come and buy... Uh, uh, and all of these things are important. The pig pepper is important. The pig tail is important. The chicken feed is important. When are we going to grow our own backyard chicken? When are we going to grow our own, our own, our own portraits in the back of our, our compounds? In this country, we drink water made in Lebanon. We eat, in fact, if you check all of our hotels, all of our supermarkets today, we have water. Liberia has abundance of water. Why should our Ministry of Commerce allow water to be imported into this nation? We have Liberia, we have Liberians that are educated, but there's so much book and plenty of necktie. 
don't want us to go into the farm to do work. We don't want to go into industry. Everybody wants to hold peace of fire and say, I work with government. Government is the single most employer in this nation, the highest employer in this nation. And it is wrong. We need to empower the private sector. We need to empower the private sector. And that's why you see Chinese are coming here. They are mining sand, our natural resources. They are mining coal, charcoal. Chinese are mining charcoal. In this nation today, we have Chinese that are doing vegetable farming in this nation. In this nation today, we have we have. We have uh, 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 Asians that are selling mineral water and selling cold water to us for us to drink. We have even Lebanese that are producing water in this nation. It is not supposed to be. It's a curse. It's because our mentality is wrong. Because if you if you if you produce a water that is uh, made in Liberia, this is. Uh, how you call it? Uh, pellet, pellet drinking water. Or oh, this is crude drinking water. The Arab Lebanese say that me will drink pellet man water and bake you. Yeah. Pellet people that me will eat gola bread. I prefer to eat Lebanese bread or fatin bread. I can eat gola bread. Christian friend, it is wrong. Gola man will not poison you. But just that laziness must leave us. You can't be living from Bafogwe. You can't be living from all the way Teni in Grand Cayman to come to Moruga to buy rice and you have all the soil. It is wrong. You can't leave from Rivers to come to Moravia and come to Bikela to buy pepper. It is wrong. You can't leave from Nimba. You can't leave from Nimba and come to Monrovia to buy chicken and chicken feet. It is wrong. We have all the soil. We have everything it takes to produce in our nation. So the church must take the lead. I said the church must take the lead. COVID-19 has taught us some lessons. I started calling the agriculturists in, my, in our congregation. I started con connecting and contacting with some of them. And look, gentlemen, the time is coming. COVID-19 has taught us some lessons. This lockdown, can you imagine if the lockdown has, has continued for a longer period of time and no Nobody cross from anywhere. Nobody goes anywhere. It is what you have that you will eat. It's what you produce that you will eat. Now the church will run a welfare system. True, true. And then during the, the course of this COVID nineteen, we've been giving out and giving out. But what is coming in? What is coming? No time to offer any longer. So where do we take the money now to buy continuously give out the food, food to people? So people need to understand that being a beggar only makes you a servant. I give you the scriptures again. Proverbs chapter 22 and verse 7. Go and write it down. He become a poor. The Proverbs 22 7 says that the borrower will be servant to the lender. So borrowing should be out of our mentality. Christian friends, do you know that this ministry has nothing called borrowing in this DNA? This big building you see, we didn't borrow money from anywhere. We don't have donors anywhere. We don't have anyone contributing out of this nation to say that, oh, they, uh, how you call it? I, 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 am a, I am a donor. This church has no other organization, no funding from any organization. Even government of Liberia have done investigation to ask where these people get money from. No, the little that come in, we manage it properly and we produce something. I'm a builder by profession before I became a pastor. And up till tomorrow, I'm still building. Even up till today, I'm still building. I build houses for people and give it to them. I build houses for people and, and, and encourage people. I have a team of, of contractors around me. But I'm also a farmer. So I'm going back into that farming area. And I'm encouraging you, the church must go into farming. If we must be self-sufficient, if we must be saved from the coming pandemic, from the coming trouble on the planet Earth, we need, to, we need to have diligence. The Bible says it is the diligent that will bear rule. It is the diligent that will bear rule. He become a poor that dealer with a slack hair. I read that Proverbs chapter 10 in closing. And verse 4. He who is slack with his hands will become poor. But the hand of the diligent shall bear rule. Now verse 5 says... He who gathereth in summer is a wise son, but he that sleepeth in heaven is a son that causes sheep. Our nation need to wake up from the slumber. We've been sleeping too long. We've been playing Ludo and Checker too long. We've been playing Ludo and Checker too long. We've been playing Ludo and Checker too long. We need to leave the Ludo bow. We need to stop running after politicians and start running back to the soil and produce something. No government under heaven can give the citizens everything. No politician born of a woman is able to give the citizens everything. The citizens must wake up and do things for themselves. The citizens must wake up and do things for themselves. Himself. 
past and present leadership. Ask them in government. This is one pastor that has not asked for a dime. And this is one church ministry that has not solicited for fun. Ask anyone in town. Have I ever written you a letter asking for a fund to buy drum set or we are doing building project? We need something for you. We have never asked because as fall in scripture that a borrower will always be a servant to the lender. You are a beggar when you are poor in your mind. But if you can think that God will produce everything through you, God will give you, give you the grace and you will produce something. I know there's not the kind of subject you like, but only, only blessed Liberians and blessed Christians will understand that Paul was a tent maker. Jesus was a capital boy. Peter was a fisherman. What is your career? What is your profession? Ordinary shouting to people, motivational speaking, preaching on Sunday and what is good. But after preaching, what's next? You must do something to take care of your family. Put your hands to work. Put your hands to work. We have felt our soul. Everything you put in our ground produces. We need to wake up and change the way we do church. It must not be church as usual. We are returning to church in a few hours time, but it is not church as usual. It is not church that you just spend five hours a day inside the church doing nothing. No. After you spend one hour or two hours in church, get out there and do something. Produce something. Let your brains begin to work. Let your hands begin to work. I'm not saying you do 419 business. No, I'm sending you to do real, real good business. Do something productive. Don't go and, and trade people. Don't do Yahoo, Yahoo business. Don't do business that will be fooling people on the internet. Give them fake picture that, oh, this is what I do in Africa. When they sell you money, mm, you bury it. They sell you money, mm, you bury it. No, if you continue to steal, you will die poor. You will die poor. But you need to wake up and put your hands to work. Wake up and put your brains to work because he become a poor that dealer with a slack hand. If we he healing this morning, heal our mentality. Lord, heal our mentality. Politicians don't have the answer. The answer is right with us. The answer, Jesus has given the answer. He that does not walk must not eat. Jesus said, my father walk and he that too I walk. Go walk for six days. Jesus said, I walk. Jesus didn't say, I used to walk. He said, my father walk and he that too I walk. So Jesus was a walker. Father was a worker. Of Jesus is a worker. Father in heaven is a worker. Holy Spirit is a worker. Who are you? A lazy Christian waiting for food to eat. A lazy Christian waiting for a politician to come and give it to you. A lazy Christian begging all over the place. We need to stop it. We need to stop it. Pastor, tithes and offering must be used for the intended purpose. Good. But the long and short of it was that we need to produce something out of time and offering. We have produced the big buildings. We have produced the big ministries. Now we need to produce the big economy. We need to produce the big economy. Become self-sufficient. If every church will open a branch in the interior and start producing food, as soon as this COVID-19 subsides, I'm traveling to Nima and to Lofa. I'm traveling to Bon Nima and Lofa. And everywhere we have church, we, the vision is that we have school. But everywhere we have church now, we're going to have school, we don't have farm. We don't have church farm, we don't have school farm, we don't have pastor farm, we don't have bishop farm, and we don't have president farm. In the name of Jesus. The Lord bless you in the name of Jesus Christ. So this is the time to pray. I believe the message has gone far this morning. It has gone deep this morning. Please, if you are sending money for your relatives from abroad, please tell them, the one I'm sending you is about the last one I'm sending you. I will send you small thing this time, but use that small thing to do big thing. Start making some market. Start planting something behind the house. The next time you call them, tell them to put a video on. You want to see the market. You want to see what they produce out of that money. Because if we don't break the evil cycle, the dependency syndrome, that's how we remain poor and we die poor. That will not be our portion. In the name of Jesus. And so, Father in heaven, we thank you. Thank you for your word this morning. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for your word is the truth. And there is nothing but the truth. Father, we return this morning and ask for mercy. We ask for mercy. In everywhere we have been lazy in our mind. Lord, your word says you have not given the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a self-disciplined mind, a productive mind, a sound mind, a mind that will produce sound innovation. Lord God Almighty, we ask for your help this day. We pray that like beers will put their mind to work. The church of Jesus Christ will put their mind to work. Christians we put their minds to work. We will not depend on government. We will not depend on relatives abroad. We will not depend on our friends in high places. We will not depend on our neighbor. We will stop borrowing salt and borrowing pepper. We will stop begging for pepper and for salt. We will stop borrowing for fire and for water. We will stop buying sand from foreigners in the name of Jesus. Lord, the time has come for us to wake up from our slumber and take control of our natural resources and walk
work hard for, to produce for every Liberia in the name of Jesus. Father, we pray that Liberia will become a self-sufficient nation, a nation that has regard for God, a nation that is righteous, a nation that will rise up from the slumber and take responsibility of our own future. Father, we pray if there be any curse in this virtual cycle that has caused us to become beggars as a people, we break that curse today in the name of Jesus. We break that curse today in the name of Jesus. The dependency syndrome, we break it today in the name of Jesus. The dependency syndrome, we break it today in the name of Jesus. Lord, as Liberia, we don't trust each other. We don't invest in each other. Have mercy. Have mercy. Have mercy. Oh Lord, the crooked way of life has enter into our younger people. They don't want to go through the right process. They want to pass through the corner to get to the top. Lord God Almighty, we pray let that mentality be changed and let it be changed and let it be changed in the name of Jesus. As parents, oh Lord, grant us the grace to raise our young generation to become diligent people, to become hard workers, to become productive workers in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. And so Lord God Almighty, you will bless the righteous and you will bless us with favor and you will surround us with favor as we pay you. Oh Lord, we pray for open doors this day. Open doors for the church. Open doors for all the viewers. Open doors for everyone watching this day. That Lord will become investors and will not become consumers. Our consumer mentality must change. We must eat what we produce and produce what we eat in the name of Jesus. Lord, we will not become beggars because your word says we become poor and we become beggars because our hands are slack. Our hands are slack. From today, our mentality will not be slack. Our mentality has been slack. This is why our heads have been slack. Lord God Almighty, let us be a turnaround. Turn our captivity, O Lord. Turn our captivity, O Lord. Turn our captivity, O Lord. The days of manna falling from heaven is over. The days of manna falling from heaven is over. Lord God Almighty, we pray. Let there be innovations. And let there be newness of life. And let there be willingness of the people to put their hands to work. And put their brains to work. Let that curse be broken. Let the form of wickedness. Come to an end in Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for your mercy has prevailed. You are the God of second chance. Lord, between now and this time next year, every church of Jesus Christ in this nation, every congregation will have a means of livelihood apart from tithe and offering. We will focus more on developing our people and being productive than being dependent. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for it is settled and it is settled. Lord, we pray that our followers will take this word with meekness. And they will apply it to their lives. And we pray those in authority will hear this word and they will also act on it. We pray that legislations will be made that Liberians will go back to the soil and begin to produce what we eat and eat what we produce. And Liberianization policy will be revisited. And businesses meant for Liberians will come back to Liberians. And our nation will be blessed. And our nation will, will prosper supernaturally. And wave your hands and wave your help in Jesus' precious name. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for a new beginning. Thank you, mighty God, for a new beginning. This day, your mentality is you. My mentality is you. Our mentalities are you. Our nation is blessed in Jesus' precious name. Amen. God bless you. God bless you. See you at the midnight hour of prayer. Jesus' name.